Black Family with Pastor Carl Lewis and myself, Clement Humphrey. Rebuilding the Black Family is dedicated to discussing principles essential to building strong, productive, and successful families. Please join the conversation by liking, following, and sharing us from our Facebook page. And that's facebook.com forward slash Foundation for Life Church and facebook.com forward slash SPR Live FM. Now, let's join Pastor Carl and me, Clement Humphrey. Oh, we're good to go. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right, right. we're good to go. Well, welcome again to another Rebuilding the Black Family. Uh, great to be with you, and thanks for tuning in to this broadcast. Thanks yeah. again, uh, Claremont. Great to no, see you. Great to see you, too, You've man. You've been on holiday for the last two weeks, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you weren't working with me, so you must have been on holiday, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm messing with you. But anyway, good to have you back, and... Um, How's things been going? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just, uh, what I'm doing actually, folks would probably want to know why I'm looking down um, at, at, uh, at, at, looking at my stuff, phone? just my uh, smartphone, just to make sure that we're all live and ready to go. Uh, we have a, that everything uh, looks good. We have a, a, what do you call it, a trainee? A trainee. Of, uh, uh, intern. Uh, an intern, yeah. Who's doing the work for us now, so okay. I, I get to free up myself a little oh, bit, yep. so I can actually have a conversation with you, well, a, uh, uninterrupted. <laughs> a, a producer in training. Yes, right, that's right. So great okay. to have her. Fantastic. All right. Well, today, um, what we're going to look at is the power of fathers. Mm -hmm. So the power of fathers. We're going to look at that uh, extensively. You know, in the past we have addressed um, some of this, the importance of right, fathers right. in their children's lives. But I thought today we're going to look at it a, a bit more extensively. Mm -hmm. And maybe, uh, Clement, what maybe prompted it is a, um, a wonderful gentleman uh, passed away last Monday mm -hmm. uh, that I've known for many, many years. Uh, his name is uh, Jubal Phillips. Okay. And so, uh, very good man. But just the way when I was given the call by one of his sons and uh, just telling me about mm -hmm. you know him, how he passed away, and a few words came to my mind. I thought of... Um, a faithful husband, a disciplinarian, mm -hmm. and a good man. Mm -hmm. Something like the phrase. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we can't, um, and his sons are, two sons are doing very well, you know, done well for mm -hmm. themselves. Both are married, you know, have children. And um, we do need to emphasize this area of fathers because oftentimes I think in the culture we live in, um, I think the role of fathers, the importance of fathers has been severely Mm. Underemphasized. Mm. So whether it's in the media, whether it's in governments, what different um, the culture, the popular culture, right. we need to look at this again just to encourage men, uh, particularly to be involved in the lives of their children. Yeah. So sure. you know whether you are um, still married or together with the mother of your children. Um, Regardless of you know your station in life or what you're going through, I want to encourage you about the power of your role in the, in your children's lives. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to look at a few things. I'm going to look today 
just because this subject is so important, I felt we need to do some good justice to it. I'm going to look at about uh, a few articles that emphasize this and, and that really address this. Uh, some of it, some are quite an objective way, some of it using some empirical studies, and then we're going to wrap up with looking at some things, what, <coughs> what Scripture says. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Claremont, I was looking at an article that's called The Child and Family Research by the University of Texas in Houston, and they were asking the questions, you know, um, well, they made a statement, dads make a big difference, and that was the result mm -hmm. of their findings, and so they actually researched it scientifically. And so I thought it was interesting, so I'm going to just read... Uh, just some some of what they said. They said, involved dads have a direct impact on their children's future. Mm. A direct impact. Involved, notice, involved. Mm -hmm. So you might not, let's say, be in the same house as your children, but being involved in their lives makes a big difference. So right. involved fatherhood is linked to better outcomes on nearly every measure of child well-being, every measure, from cognitive development and educational achievement to self-esteem and pro-social behavior. So just about every measurement. Now, they gave a few stats, which is really interesting. Children who grow up with involved fathers, again, we're going to talk today about the power of fathers, really critical. So listen to this now, these, these proven stats. Children who grow up with involved fathers are 39% more likely to earn mostly A's in school. Mm. Really? 45% less likely to repeat a grade. 60% less likely to be suspended or expelled from school. Twice as likely to go to college and find stable employment after high school. 75% less likely to have a teen birth. And 80% less likely to spend time in jail. Wow. Look at that. Wow. Th that's huge. Mm -hmm. So you talk about dads make a big difference and why this is important. <laughs> This flies in the face of all the negative stuff we hear mm -hmm. about the unimportance right. of fathers. Again, the key word there they used in this study is, in, and I guess recent searching this over years and just looking at some of this data, is involved fathers. Correct. Right? We didn't say perfect fathers. Mm -hmm. But involved. So you're involved in the life of your children. And so this, again, is critically important. And again, part of what we want to encourage in this uh, program today is encouraging men, encouraging fathers. Again, no matter where you are, no matter what, what your present relationship with is your child, is do everything in your power to be involved with them. Let them know you're there. Um, establish the communications, make it stronger, make it better. If you uh, are not in uh, good talking terms or speaking terms with your children, do whatever it takes to get involved with their lives. In fact, even if they think they don't need you, right. do whatever it can. Yeah. Do whatever it takes just to encourage them. Because sometimes if you've been estranged from them, you know, they're obviously sometimes will initially give some of the negative uh, pushback. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a defense mechanism, but also they're, they're uh, ex responding out of hurt. But I'm saying look past that and let them know how much you love them, how much you care about them, and how much you want to be involved in their lives. All right? You want to go ahead. It, it, it's amazing that you're talking about that. I was having a conversation with a buddy of mine today. You were talking about um, his children, actually. And the statement that his wife made towards him and towards uh, one of the children, uh, she said, it's your daughter, right? Mm. And I said to him, um, as a father, because I know him for a long time, as a, mm. as a, as a father, uh, because there seemed to be some kind of discrepancy going on between the mother and the child. Mm. As, a, as a father, regardless of however it may seem to be, you always have to be standing right next to her because you never know what is going on in our headspace right now more than anything else she needs you and he said i try to be there as much as possible as i can i says don't try to be there be there that's right that's right you know, like that. don't try to be there just be there because mm -hmm. you know uh because when she says your child it's, it's like a disowning mm -hmm. not our child but your child 
and it's all the children belong to them. It's particularly pointed at your child. So it says, be there. Because mm -hmm. there's coming a time when she's going to really need you. Because mm -hmm. mama already made a clear line. And sometimes we don't recognize the words that we say, how, how cutting it is, and how mm -hmm. uh, it has a, a defined end moment. Mm -hmm. Your child. And of course, she could, I don't know, I'm not, I don't know if I correctly, but um, oftentimes when parents, either parent, make that kind of statement, it's oftentimes when they're going, they're being faced with something negative, they're being hurtful, so mm -hmm. they're putting it on you. That's your right, child. Your child. <laughs> well, and in that case, it wasn't like even a case of that you say it's your child. It's a case of where there were some decisions that had to be made, okay. and um, and she just pretty much like a, it's like a, an abandonment, right? Okay. At that point. That's mm -hmm. the, the case, mm -hmm. and I said, I said, are you sure that he said, I'm telling you exactly what she said. I'm like, that's a defining moment there. Right? She's saying, your child, I said, said to him, I said, whatever you do, be there. Don't yeah. try to be there. Be exactly. there. Yeah, that's good. That's be good. there. So we got to be there. So again, yeah. I mean, and, yeah, and, and if, if one more thing you're talking before yes, you go, go into the scriptures, you're talking about, um, and, and I'm, I mean, when they talk about most likely what mm -hmm. will happen mm -hmm. to these, mm -hmm. these children and so mm -hmm. forth, the target nation you're talking to is black men most of the time is mm -hmm. that's because we are the ones that are always missing in actions most of the time we are the ones missing in actions um because we but this study was done across the board across the board yeah this was across the board this study was across the board because i'm not sure can you re who who did the study do you know who did the yeah study? it was a it was a university university of texas a texas at austin mm -hmm. so um they were doing a generically it's a child and family mm -hmm. research so, just so they're about. talking about um if fathers are not involved what, what likely well to they were saying if they were saying from the positive mm -hmm. children who grow up with involved fathers, fathers right so if, if right. your father's involved right 39 percent are more likely to have earned mostly a's in school right 45 percent less likely to repeat a grade 60 percent less likely to be suspended or expel from school twice as likely to go to college and find stable employment after after high school 75 percent less likely to have a teen birth and 80 percent less likely to spend time in jail we might have addressed some of these similar numbers right. i believe for for, for canada and for also from other right. demographics but it's kind of similar but it the is. main thing is this is the um stark difference mm -hmm. or the big uh difference that dads or fathers mm -hmm. make if, in if being involved, involved, involved in the children's life. Yeah. Now, uh, from that from that that point, and the reason you talked about this, when I saw the, the article you sent to me, you said this is what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, uh, I think about three or four days ago, I was looking. I don't remember which U.S. station was. It could be. In, I don't remember which U.S. station, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and they were talking about, especially coming up towards this voting that was coming up. Yes, yes. The, the, they're talking about mm -hmm. black folks, um, and, and especially black men. They started to talk about um, the, the the communities and mm -hmm. the involvement of, of more black men coming forward mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things they talked about was the fact of absentee fathers mm -hmm. is creating this um, this this disconnect. Mm -hmm. For, for the, the, the young black fe males and females mm -hmm. getting involved to the point of where they can actually make a, a vote that is, it, it, you know, is make a difference, make a difference in the yeah. voting, right? So, and I thought to myself, and we talked about this before, um, about how the strategy has been set mm -hmm. to disconnect us, so to speak, as, 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 as parents to, with our children, especially in the black community. And of course, this is rebuilding the black family, so I, I'm focusing on that. Mm -hmm. um, that we, as black men, need to come into play in, when it comes to our children and, and stand in for them, because a lot of us are not there, mm -hmm. right? And with this study alone, tell you what will make the difference in the child's life. This should be something a wake up exactly. moment for us. Exactly. A wake up moment for us, because mm -hmm. when you have a brother who's going to have, uh, I think it's nine children, nine children with four different women. Mm -hmm. And he's not looking after not one of them. Mm -hmm. He's not. He's not even paying attention to any of them, mm -hmm. and they are still having to cry. Where's my dad? Mm -hmm. Right. This is the result. If we stay in their lives, exactly. what can actually happen? Exactly. And that's why we're bringing. Why we need to put this out there, is if men will know, this is the impact you can have. Mm -hmm. You know, then many of them are going to think twice before they go down a, a certain direction. In, in being irresponsible. Mm -hmm. Now, let me get into this, if you don't mind. I, I, there's another article that I uh, saw, mm -hmm. and it was by the Uffington Post. And I'm going to say who wrote it because I'm, I'm going to probably read most of this article. I thought mm -hmm. it was quite interesting. Mm -hmm. And um, it's by Dr. Gail Gross. Uh, she's a contributor to the Uffington Post. And so she's a human behavior specialist, parenting, 
an education expert, speaker, author. She has a PhD, a education degree, and a um, master's in education. So here's what she writes on this article. They call this article, it was an article that they actually called, there was a name to this. Anyway, it said it was talk, talking about parenting and about fathers, but listen to what she says here. She says, while almost any man can father a child, mm -hmm. there's so much more to the important role of being dad in a child's life. So that's what she called it, talked about uh, the important role of being mm -hmm. a dad. Mm -hmm. And she said, let's look at what, at who father is and why he's so important. Mm -hmm. So here it is now. It's good to look at this because these are people kind of looking out part of this in, in studying social sciences and studying families and communities. They're looking at it quite objectively. Mm -hmm. They're out here saying, let's look at all the stats here. Let's look at all the demographics. Let's just break this down and find out what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Let's see how important that is. And, you know, so there's an objectivity that I appreciate. Right. Now, listen to what she said. Fathers are central to the emotional well-being of their children. They are capable caretakers and disciplinarians. What is the word she's using? Look at that. Mm -hmm. Central right. to the emotional being. Now think about this. More and more we're having a mental health crisis. Right. That part of that, some of that is tied to emotional. Well, the thing is this. I love what she said now. Fathers are central to the emotional well-being of their children. And they're capable caretakers and disciplinarians. Now listen to this. Studies show that if your child's father is affectionate, supportive, and involved, mm -hmm. there's that word again, he can contribute greatly to your, to your child's cognitive, language, and social development, as well as academic achievement, a strong inner core resource, sense of well-being, good self-esteem, and authenticity. Correct. Look at the words. Look at look. Yeah. Look, look, look at and I, again. Look at this now. Here's someone studying the subject mm -hmm. objectively, from what it sounds like. This is a woman. Mm -hmm. Look at what she's saying about the the role or the impact uh, fathers can have. Right. Now, but I mean, just powerful. I'm, I'm gonna read that again. So if your if your child's father is affectionate, supportive, and involved, he can contribute greatly to your child's cognitive, so like, you know, your understanding, language, social development. Mm -hmm. And when I'm reading this, I'm thinking now, why do you think, um, I'm going to say the devil's behind, putting down the importance of fathers. See, look at that. Because if he does and if we're successful, and if men um, believe the lie or buy into the lie that mm -hmm. they're not important in the lives of their children, look at what we are robbing potentially our children of. I mean, this is huge. And so, an academic achievement, a strong inner core resource, a sense of well-being, good self-esteem, feeling mm -hmm. good about yourself. Look at that. And authenticity. Now, you want to stop? No, no, you, no. You, I, I want to yeah, ask you a question. Go ahead. This is just the beginning of the audience. Yeah, so, go ahead. So, go ahead. I'm, I'm listening to this, and, mm -hmm. I, and the, the, the thought that is coming to mind is that scripture that says, you cannot enter a strong man's, a strong man's home unless yes. you bind a strong yeah, man, yeah, right? Yeah. So, I'm thinking... What's the purpose of, as you're talking, so what's the purpose of getting a strong man's home is to get at the children. That's right. And and how are you going to get there? you got to bind a strong man first, which is the father of the home, or that's, that's the father. So I'm thinking, wait a minute, this is so true. Yeah. That is excellent. That scripture you brought up, that's in Luke. That is excellent. So bind you, a strong man, yeah. you get at the children. Yeah. You nullify him, mm -hmm. and by that, get him. So from what, I'm not putting words in your mouth, but from getting from what you're saying, let's nullify him, let's cancel him out, or let, let him believe his role of being involved in his children's life is not important. Brilliant. Yes. So he pulls it away, and yeah, that's and it's it. gone. That's because it. I mean, this is what happened during slavery too, as well. Mm -hmm. When when they mm -hmm. uh, put the man and do all kinds of stuff in front of yep. in front of his family, everything else. Yep. I mean, the wife will look different, and the children look different. Exactly. Kind of so when you're saying, I'm thinking, yeah, yeah this it. is what this this is a, a very practical way of putting the mm -hmm. scripture right in mm -hmm. there. Exactly. Now, and so interrupt me anytime. It says, mm -hmm. Our fathers mm -hmm. influence our relationship. Another section of this article. So, our fathers influence our relationships. Mm -hmm. Now, your child's primary re relationship with his or her father can affect all of your child's relationships from birth to death. Mm -hmm. 
including those with friends, lovers, and spouses. Mm -hmm. She's speaking to the world right. at large. Those early patterns of interaction with father are the very patterns that will be projected forward into all relationships forevermore. Mm. Not only your child's intrinsic idea of who he or she is as he or she relates to others, but also the range of what your child considers acceptable and loving. So you could see, so fathers help to put a blueprint, we could say, yeah. <clears throat> of certain values and core beliefs and a sense of who they are, a sense of right and wrong. A lot of that, fathers. Wow. So imagine, fathers, you've got to be, do whatever it takes. I'm telling you, be involved, get involved in the life of children. Let me go on, it says, listen to this. Girls will look for men who will hold the patterns of good old dad. <laughs> For after all, they know how to do that, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. Therefore, listen to this. If father was kind, loving, and gentle, they will reach for those characteristics in men. Mm. Look at that. Girls will look for in others what they have experienced and become familiar with in childhood. Mm. Because they've gotten used to those familial and historic behavioral patterns, they think that they can handle them in, the, in, in their relationships. Boys, on the other hand, will model themselves after their fathers. They will look for their father's approval in everything they do and copy those behaviors that they recognize as both successful and familiar. Thus, if dad was abusive, controlling, and dominating, those will be the patterns that their sons will imitate and emulate. However, if father is kind, loving, supportive, and protective, boys will want to be that. You know, that. there's a flip side to that. <clears throat> yeah, <please. laughs> it's that they will want to be. Mm -hmm. But if you, as a young man growing up, even a young woman kind of growing up, yeah. <clears throat> and you see these things that have been so negative to you, you don't want to. You'll make every effort with yes you can you yes you can don't to change it. it yes you can because um and as you as you're talking and i'm, I'm just thinking about my own my own children yes mm -hmm. and i'm thinking of the fact that i remember seeing uh seeing myself at their age and my dad was not involved in my life mm -hmm. he was there mm -hmm. but um the involvement was mm -hmm. very, very minuscule so to speak and um so i tell myself that i'm going to be mr know it all about them even if i don't know it all Try to get so involved in what they do, what, how they, you know, the things that they, they involve in. Now they're older now, I kind of step back a little bit and just watch them because they got different lingo, different things that they say, different things they do. Mm -hmm. But the point is, is that I try not to be like how my father was yeah. to me. Yeah. You made it, well, you made a conscious decision. I, I, I made yeah. that decision that they must know mm -hmm. who dad is. Because exactly. so many times I've, you know, I, I was in, into athletics myself. I used to do the eight, four mile. Mm -hmm. yeah, and tell them, come out and watch me. Nah. <laughs> you know, so whenever my children had to do something at every event that they have, whether it's basketball, whether it's music, whether it's whatever, I want to be there. Good. So, and, and that's some of the things that I could see them doing as well. And mm -hmm. even my daughter, too, she made a comment the other day to me, the youngest one, um, about her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. She says, oh, he cooks just like you. Mm -hmm. Oh. And he plays like you too, like he plays the mm -hmm. piano as well. And she's making these comparisons. And mm -hmm. when you said, I thought, of, hmm, yeah, I remember hearing her saying that too. Mm -hmm. She makes it, and this is true. Now, had I been different, <laughs> it's yeah. a completely different thing she would have been saying. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's true that um, you try to be involved and try to create an, an image for them that they know this is good for That's them. Good. And I did it personally yeah. because I knew how it was with my father growing up. And I think what they're looking at, they're saying in this study that human beings are social beings. Mm -hmm. We're social creatures. And by that, we we um, we model behavior. Yes. That's what they're saying. Yeah. So oftentimes, you, your default is what you grew up seeing. Mm -hmm. That's what oftentimes they say the first five, six years of a child's That's life right. is most important because they're seeing and sometimes it's almost like a program mm -hmm. being locked inside them. Yeah. That's interesting. My daughter, when she was really young, I don't know if it was four or five, someone mm -hmm. asked her, you know, um, um, who are you going to marry? I said, I'm going to marry my dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the first thing. You can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. But in their mind, they see, 
in a sense, mm -hmm. uh, and another study I, I read, the, the author said, yeah, um, the first hero of every boy mm -hmm. is who? This is dad. Their father. Yeah. And if they don't have a father, they'll find somebody of a male fact to be the hero. This is true. And the first love of every girl is who? Their father. Their dad. Yeah. See that? So again, if that's why you had said rightly something you had said earlier, if men mess up, the repercussions are huge. huge. Big time. Yeah. That's what this is about. So again, it's not putting that on a pedestal. And it's not minimizing the role of the uh, woman, but it's just the, the, the impact of fathers in their children's life, male and female, is huge. I, I, I said this, you, I think one of the earlier programs a year ago, we were talking about, we were talking about planting mm -hmm. and the farmer planting right. the seed. Yes, yes, I remember that. Right? Mm -hmm. It's exactly the same thing as a father. Mm -hmm. He's the seed planter. He's the and seed he's planter. the one who's there to be able to nurture. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, make sure that the That's plant is good. growing properly, very good. right? Very good. I mean, yes, the mother is there and she, she's there to help along and so forth. But mm -hmm. the father, his role is so, is so important mm -hmm. that he needs to recognize that, hey, this is my seed and I need to make sure that my seed is doing fine. That's the it. plant is growing well. Yep. If you abandon it, it's going to die. It's going to exactly. eventually That's suffer it. and die. That's it. Being responsible. Yeah. That's excellent. Excellent. Now, another statement says... It is impossible to overestimate the importance of dad. I love the strong language here. For example, girls who have good relationships with their fathers tend to do better in math. Isn't that interesting? Wow. Boys who have actively involved fathers tend to have better grades and perform better on achievement tests. So again, this is a general statement. It's not necessarily all, you know. And well-bonded boys develop securely with a stable and sustained sense of self. Who we are and who we are to be, we are becoming, and fathers are central to that outcome. Mm -hmm. Now, I just love how absolute yeah. she communicates in this article, and the, you know the rest of it. You know, I'm not going to look at, but because it's only about maybe half of the article. Um, but I'm telling you, this is really um, huge. Uh, this is, this is um, really important. And, you know, I think a recent study said this. Only about 20% of Americans are actually in a home with mother and father. And wow. so the, um, we have changing. There's changing homes. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, it, there's a single parent. There's um, um, even, let's say, with the more, let's say, maybe gay, lesbian lifestyle, all these kind of things that have changed the home. Mm -hmm. The thing is this, regardless of what the family dynamic is, we're saying this on today, is that fathers have to do whatever it takes yeah. to get involved and stay involved in the life of your children. There's just too much at stake. All right, so it's just too much at stake. I, I know we're, <clears throat> we're halfway through our program, but mm -hmm. so I'm going to a question to you. From a biblical standpoint, how can you prove to a man how important it is for him to be? Okay, so I was going to get to that. But yeah. so, okay, since you're asking it right up yeah. front. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because we have these three times. Yeah, I don't want so, to um, the one of the things, and I'm just going to get to yeah. it. He's just trying to jump in there. You know, <laughs> jump up. But, <laughs> but it's no, interesting. Just put much in there. No, no, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Now, isn't it interesting? Um, but that's a great question. In Genesis 19, sorry, 18 verse 19, God makes an amazing statement. Now think about this. There would be no nation of Israel without Abraham. There, we could say there would be no church without Abraham because Jesus came through the seed of Abraham. Mm -hmm. Now think about this. God says to Abraham, who was very important then overall to this planet, I know Abraham. He will command his sons after him. Mm. See that? Mm -hmm. So I can bring upon him the things that I promised him. So scripturally speaking, God was saying now, what, what I want to come into your life, Abraham, and into your family, is going to come because of your obedience to train your children. Look at the response. He said, I, so I chose Abraham. He said this. He said, I know what Abraham's going to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, another thing. Think about this now. Here's a, I'm glad you asked that because I wasn't thinking about this one. But I just thought about another, another big one. Isn't it interesting 
God sent his son, Jesus, mm -hmm. through a virgin woman. Mm -hmm. Why did he not let Mary raise her on her own? Need the family family setting. It's because there's only certain things Mary, the mother, would bring. Mm -hmm. There's not discounting her. Yeah. There were things Joseph, and we know the character of Joseph. Oh, correct. We know his character must have been very, very good. Mm -hmm. There were things that were critical to Jesus' development as a human being that Joseph would bring that Mary couldn't. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Well, I mean, now, you're talking about the character yeah. of Joseph. I mean, Joseph himself proved himself when he says, well, after he found out that she was, he was going to put her away quietly, and the angel came and spoke See to that? him. No, 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 no. See that? This is what's going on here. So you know what type of guy he was. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Look at that. You know what type of guy he was. Now, look, so a couple of examples. Look at that. So look how God made sure mm -hmm. he had the right man to raise his son. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me father's not important. Yeah. So and think about this. Oh, what was Jesus' profession before he became a preacher? He was a carpenter. Mm -hmm. What was Joseph? A carpenter. So we know they had a good relationship. He was trained. He was he trained and developed him, right? We know again. God emphasized the training. Abraham, I, I've chosen him. Why? I know he's going to command his sons mm -hmm. after him. In other words, he's going to train them to do what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Fathers are critically important. Okay, another scripture, Ephesians chapter four, chapter six. Excuse me. Verse 4, after it says, honor your father and mother children, it says, Father, fathers train, nurture your children, and admonish them in the Lord. Don't provoke them to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. It would tell me then, we're going to have to answer to God for how we train and raise our children. I like the word you use, nurture. Mm -hmm. um, because so often, <laughs> we hear it's the mother who's the nurturing side of the things and not necessarily Perfect. the father. Yeah. And the scripture says nurture. Yeah. So okay. a lot of the, we, yeah. give, we do give a, there's a protection we bring. Mm -hmm. There's a, um, there's an instruction side to us. There's a discipline side mm -hmm. to us. There's a structure. You know, there's all these things we bring, boundaries that we bring into the children's life that, so we could say, your men, fathers are supplying something that mothers don't. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it is. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. That's it just does. the way it is. And so to um, to elevate one and minimize one is not fair. And it's not just not right. And I think that's where we rob it. If we say now, like I was telling somebody or another group, just because we have a, a lot of, um, let's say, a single parent epidemic, if you will, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that's the right model. Correct. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, yeah. so we have to make up for it, you know. But so I'm not putting one, anyone down. I'm not condemning anyone in that set setting. I'd never do that. What we're saying, because even in those settings, you need to introduce those young men to male role models mm -hmm. and male other good, strong, good men into their lives to bring and add to what that good mother is doing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Just yeah. because of yeah. what men bring. And again, we're highlighting men, again, on this one of things, we un unashamedly highlight the importance of men because God emphasizes mm. men. Men are critically important. And I'm telling you, just all the st studies show it, the Bible shows it, you remove the man, you minimize the man, you, you um, just say eliminate the man, I'm telling you, the family is going to be chaos. So we have to elevate the fathers. And that's why we said how we raise homes, how we begin homes is critically important. That's why women have to know when they, before they um, get married or before they lie with a man, <laughs> is this the man I want to be the father of my, my children? children yeah. If they think about that, we tell you, they, would change, they would not do a whole lot of stuff they do. Why? Because this man, is, is he going to be the man who's going to love you, but he's going to show that in how he cares for his children? Look at this. Look at these studies. Yeah. Secular studies basically saying what we know the Bible says. Yes. And they've done decades of studies on this just saying what God's Word says. Mm -hmm. So if we can say, well, this is coming out of somebody, not they don't have a Christian title. They're actually validating, proving what Scripture says.
Now, she said this. I think this was written on a Father's Day because she said, finally, on this Father's Day, it is important to recognize and reward dads for being there and actively teaching important life skills to children. Look at that. It is important to their children and meaningful to dads everywhere when you say thank you. Job well done. This, after all, is what makes life worth living. This is your true legacy. Well, look at that. Ensuring the health and well-being of your children that future generation to be. Isn't that excellent? Mm -hmm. now, again, look at that article. <laughs> I'm thinking, that's just excellent. So again, we want to really emphasize, again, men, step up, you use your language, step up to the plate, don't be afraid. Those children you brought into this planet, like you said, pour into them, water them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're yes. your seed. See, that's right. You are responsible. <laughs> Right? That's true. She started out the article that, you know what, just about any man can, you know, have a child. Yeah. But not everyone is a father. father. That's right. You know, that's, that's, right. that's some work. That takes some responsibility. You know, that takes, you know, m making sure you're involved. So a father is involved. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, you asked another question. You know what Paul says? Even spiritually, he says this. In um, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, I believe, he says an amazing statement. Mm -hmm. He says, you know, you have many teachers, but not many fathers now, why would he wow. say that yeah yeah we well, yeah. see you know you can have so teachers who just say stuff mm -hmm. a father is with you mm -hmm. a father guides you mm -hmm. a father teaches you does that make sense mm -hmm. so a father's alongside you you know and that's why many many um many of us we, we missed out on see the father is alongside you they're gonna if you're if you're not doing so well in school well what happens they're taking you alongside and saying how are you doing, son? What's going on? Right, right. Right? They're not just teaching. What's going on? They guide you. They're giving you instruction to make corrections and adjustments to your life. Uh, oftentimes, they're the ones taking you to your first driver's lessons or teaching you to drive. You see what? They're teaching you. They're, guide, they're there in your life. A teacher is like from a distance. They can give you information, but a, but a father guides you. They're there, nurtures you, takes you along, takes you by the hand, and guides you. They're walking the road with you. Mm -hmm. You're not alone on life's journey. Why? You have a father. I'm telling you, this is huge, folks. Anyway, go ahead. No, I'm, I'm, uh, you probably would have seen it, and mm -hmm. the reason I, I, um, <laughs> I'm trying to fit it in correctly, mm -hmm. uh, I believe once you're a father, you're always a father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No matter what, what neighborhood you're in, what uh, society, uh, circumstances you're in, what condition you're in, and mm -hmm. once there are children that are younger, or children around, or teenagers around, whatever, once you're a dad mm -hmm. to your own, you'll always be a dad to others because that's your role. Just like if, you, if you're a good pastor, you'll be a pastor to everybody, every other person, not just the person that goes to your church. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, so in saying this, I'm going to an art, uh, something that I saw recently. You might have seen it with the teacher um, and the student, the conflict with the teacher and the student. Yes, yes, yes. And I keep running over my mind thinking, I know he's a father. And he let a 14-year-old get to him that way, yeah. regardless of whatever. Because you got to understand, as a father, you will have, sometimes your own child could be the type that will want to back chat you or be yeah. rude or disrespectful. And how you need to conduct yourself as always That's as a father. Good. That's right. Because right? I'm, That's I'm exactly. thinking his, his situation right now, if I was in his situation, especially being in one of authority, a father figure again, would I have responded yeah. or reacted to his, mm -hmm. his commentary? Or would I have kind of toned it down? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A father is always a father, regardless of whatever situation you're in. But when you said that, though, I think um, it's a great statement you made. It shows then um, fathers have to be developed. Yeah. So that we 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 have that you're talking about self control. Right. So we're composed. Right. And when you're talking that, I'm saying that you you walk in that awareness mm -hmm. that I'm a father, mm -hmm. and then what I do, I'm being watched. You know. So there's a, a young man that um, I met. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, could be four weeks ago, about a month ago, yeah. And um, tall, he said I'm a six five, taller than my own son, mm -hmm. who's six mm -hmm. four already, right? 
But you could look at his face and see that he's young, and he, he's been a little bit of an upstart because of his something. I looked at him, I said, you know, because for some reason he thought I was younger, <laughs> and I said to him, I said, I have children older than you, and for me to even bother you is like bothering my children right now. And I said, I'm going to treat like I treat my children. I ignore them and walk away. So he asked his friend, how old is he? The friend mm -hmm. says, I don't know. Why don't you go ask him? You're the one that gave him mouth and mouth and <laughs> off, right? So he finally came back to me and he asked me my age. I told him my age. He went, oh, you're as old as my dad. I said, I told you, you could be one of my children. I said, that's why I'm going to bother with you. And I walked away. Now, in time, I just want to knock him over, right? <laughs> but I'm telling myself, this could be my son. And you just need some guidance at so this point. So that's what you're saying, once a father, yeah. You're walking in that right. awareness, that consciousness that you're about. You know, and I, I've been into stores before and I see young people misbehaving. I said, come on, guys. I mean, come on. Pull yourself together. It's not the way to behave. And they look at me and say, yes, I'm old enough to be a father to tell you don't do what you're doing. And they'll laugh or walk away. Kid. But I always do that. That's my thing, right? Because <clears throat> as a father, you don't stop being a dad. Yeah, I like that. So you're saying, but what you've done, Claremont, you pulled it out just beyond your biological children. Mm -hmm but you're speaking now to the influence Correct. beyond the home that true fathers mm -hmm. have. So that's even huge. Yeah. That's the multiplying effect then of a father. Correct. That's Correct. excellent. That Correct. is excellent. Now, there's another article I want to speak to because I think it's so excellent. This other article is called The Significance of a Father's Influence. And um, this was, the, the way they started this was saying, is there any real evidence that dads really have a uniquely important impact in the lives of their children. You like this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> our, our culture seems to place little a value on the role of fathers. I see evidence of this everywhere from pop culture, media, to government policy. Yeah, look at that. See, see just be honest. Now, your in intuitions are right on the mark. We can cite a host of reputable studies to prove it. Now, what they go on then, this is from, this is Focus on the Family. He wrote this. Um, but it was the information is from a Dr. David Popeno, professor of sociology at Rutgers University and co-director of the National Marriage Project. So listen to what he's got to say. Listen to this. Fathers are far more than just second adults in the home. Involved fathers, especially biological fathers, bring positive benefits to their children that no other person is as likely to bring. Mm. The pe they provide, <laughs> listen to this now, they provide protection and economic support and male role models. They have a parenting style that is significantly different from that of a mother and that difference is important in healthy child development. Now there's a few points here. One of the most vital aspects of a child's contribution of a dad's, excuse me, contribution to the lives of his kids lies precisely in what Dr. Propeno calls a significantly different parenting styles. Mm -hmm. So men and women are different, right? Mm -hmm. So mothers will parent differently from, the, from uh, fathers, mm -hmm. but you need both. Mm -hmm. For example, dads love their children more dangerously, so that's why they play rougher. Mm -hmm. you, know, we, you know, we, we do. Even with the girls, you, 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 you play kind of rougher with them, right? <clears throat> But this is what he says, they're more likely to encourage risk-taking, mm -hmm. the fathers. Mm -hmm. They provide kids with a broader diversity of social experiences. They also introduce them to a wider variety of methods of dealing with life. They tend to stress rules, justice, fairness, and duty in discipline. In this way, they teach children the objectivity and consequences of right and wrong. They give kids insight into the world of men. Mm -hmm. See that? So, so let me say that. That's, let me stop right there. Mm -hmm. So when men are not involved in the lives of their children, they're robbing their children from understanding men. Very true. So you can be so you know you're you're not preparing them to understand men, right? If you prepare your young men and girls, who men are, what they are, their pros and cons, how they think, you can prepare them. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I want to jump yep. in here with a, a question someone asked. Um, it says, where's the representation of mother? A family consists of both parents. Tell me you will be doing a segment with mother. I will. To get a I will. And, you know, and I'm glad you said that. But I think a, please understand. And I know I knew that was a come. I knew it was going to come. But what, why I'm saying this is this. Like these three articles have said, and they're all independent. It's right. amazing. And, and 
One is from a more of a Christian base. Two of them are secular studies. Mm -hmm. And all three of them are basically saying the role of the male in, oh, sorry, the fathers mm -hmm. in our society at present has been severely diminished and, uh, and, so. and recognized. That's why, yeah. well, and so over, when I was thinking about this week's program, I said, we've got to focus on this, yeah. the, the role of the fathers. And then, I, I, yeah, I, 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 I know, uh, I think I know the person who's saying yeah. that. And I don't mind I, that. I, that's fine. That's fine. I don't, I don't, unapologetically, yeah. I will say, we need to talk about the yeah, fathers. Yeah. They are yeah. absent in the yeah. homes. And by the way, much so. And if we do this right, part of why, and I, and I really appreciate <laughs> yeah, the feedback. Yeah, I do. I do. Um, Verlin. Verlin, yeah. thank you so much. Really, really appreciate it. Um, you'll find if we do this right as men, mm -hmm. the help it will be to mothers is huge. Yeah. I'm telling you. So part of what motivates me to do this is this. In seeing mothers do way more. If it wasn't for women in our communities, my God. A lot of our children. I'm telling you, yeah. they'll be gone. Yeah. But the only reason women have had to do some of, uh, just carry so much of the load is because of men not being involved the way they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So we have to address this. But also you've got to understand, when you've created a climate where men, repeating myself again, where men have been made to feel they're insignificant, they're unimportant. Well, you keep hearing that. Then what, what have men often done by default? Just back away. Back away yeah. That's all you're hearing. That's how you're being treated. And so if men will realize they will not only just impact children, it will impact the, their uh, mothers. Oh, but there's something else I'm going to read here. Watch this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just, part of, part of it will answer what something she just said there. Um, i got to go. Keep going here. Um, here we go. They give kids inside to the world of men. They prepare them for the challenges of life and demonstrate by example the meaning of respect between the sexes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Look at that. <clears throat> In connection with this last point, research indicates that a married father is substantially less likely to abuse his wife or children than men in any other category. Mm. Look at that. So how many um, women are in um, bad relationship or uh, abusive relationships or vice versa? Now, oftentimes that's tied then to a, a someone, let's say, who wasn't taught properly, didn't have the right example, mm -hmm. right? So this is huge. Now watch this. Fathers encourage competition and gendering independence. Mothers promote equity creating a sense of security. Mm -hmm. See the difference? Mm -hmm. Dads emphasize conceptual communication, which helps kids expand their vocabulary and intellectual capacities. Moms major in sympathy, care, and help, thus demonstrating the importance of relationships. Mm -hmm. See, they, they complement one another. Dads tend to see their child in relation to the rest of the world. Moms tend to see the rest of the world in relation to their child. Mm -hmm. I like that. Neither style is uh, adequate in and of itself. Taken together, they balance each other out and equip up and coming generation with a healthy, well-rounded approach to life. I just got to read a couple more. Some other points that we made here. We might have to pick this up next week. Um, where's the evidence for these assertions? Watch this. Obviously, we can't go into great detail here. And then it says this. 82% of studies on father involvement and child well-being published since 1980 found significant associations between positive father involvement and offspring well-being. Look at that. What's that? 82% of studies since 1980. Wow. So what we're saying, I mean... I mean, it just goes over and over. I'm going to read this one. Listen. In an analysis of over 100 studies on parent-child relationship, it was found that a loving and nurturing import, um, father excuse me, was as important for a child's happiness, well-being, and social and academic, academic success as having a loving and nurturing mother. Mm -hmm. Just as important. Not more, but just as important. Some studies even indicated that, listen, father love was a stronger contributor to some important positive child well-being outcomes. Now, we might pick some of this up next week. 
I just want to emphasize, though, see, the, you can't lie, you can't argue the evidence. And we're trying to say this. Oftentimes, men have been left out of the picture. Men have been made to feel you're not important. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And we've not realized how that's robbed entire families. Well, you can just look at, at our, 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 what you call, social behavior. In fact, let's look at um, Mother's Day and Father's Day. Which one gets the most headway, uh, uh, most advertising ever? Mm -hmm. um, because we... we, we minimize what fathers are supposed to be like. Mm -hmm. and, and again, if we really think about it this way, okay, for the secular world, they did what they did. Mm -hmm. But for the Christian world, we understand that this is, a, this is a plan by the enemy to make sure you minimize the father so that the generations mm -hmm. to come will be one that are terrible people coming up. Mm -hmm. So we need to be speaking constantly to fathers, stick in your role, stick in your role, and become yeah. who you ought to be. Mm -hmm. Now, as we, I'm going to wrap this up a little bit. Um... What, what we, we can't really talk about this subject since fathers are so important. Mm -hmm. Again, so the empirical study saw it. Social science studies saw it. Scripture shows it. Mm -hmm. We can't talk about the power of a father. That's what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. So there's great power, there's great influence of a father. So what we need, what I want to wrap this up is this. It means we have to make sure we do everything to honor the fathers in our lives. Mm. And that's, that's modeled. Does that make sense? Yep. We, we've got to make sure. So think about this. When we minimize the role of fathers, when we act as if, as long as they bring a child, give me, give, okay, you put a seed in the ground, like you just said. Yep. You just put the seed. Give me, so I, no, think about this now. Mm -hmm. If women just look at men, as long as they give me a seed. Yeah. The scripture did say that's going to happen in the last. No, that's what yeah. not, if that's all you think, yeah. I'm telling you right now. Yeah. Then what that kind of thinking does? I don't understand what it does. It not only minimizes the role of men, but it robs children of their training and development. Correct. It's almost like going to school and you're only going to get fifty percent training. Mm -hmm. The man provides fifty percent. The father, the woman provides fifty percent. Well, if you only go to school and that's just fifty percent is inputted. Mm -hmm. The child is robbed 50%. Correct. So now we're emphasizing this. We say, no, fathers, they, they need your communication. Um, children need your love. They need your affection. They need to hear your words. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. They need to hear encouragement. They need to, go, to be disciplined by you. Correct. Not just by the mom. They need to, they need to be held. I don't know how many times I, I say uh, I love my girls all, every time, every day of the world. Right? Mm -hmm. They need they need to hear that from dad. That mom is not enough. They've got to hear it from, from you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Then with that, what's important is that honor. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons we have a dishonor of fathers is if you see them as unimportant. Yeah. They they're lowered in their esteem. So women talking down, uh, being disrespectful, dishonorable. Now listen to me. I know what it's like. You've got to be. You've got to be willing to honor your father. For example, my dad. He's 82. What do I do? He's not perfect. He's made mistakes. But what have I done? I make sure I see him very regularly. Mm -hmm. Why? He's my dad. So part of this, you cannot recognize the power of fathers. You can't separate it from the honor of fathers. Right. You've got to honor them. Again, they're not perfect. They made mistakes. But you've got to recognize that you're one dad you've got. And honor that father. Honor his role in your life. Does that make sense? I mean, yep. really respect him. And and again, they've made mistakes many times because they didn't know. They weren't taught some things. They weren't aware of some things we know. we got to do better. We can't use the excuse that's what they did. No, I'm responsible in my generation to raise my children to impact <clears throat> their lives with great love, with great um, affection, with great care, with great honor. And we need to teach them mm -hmm. to be honorable, so they honor their parents. Oh, by the way, I find out if you teach your children, if teachers, if children honor their father and mother, mm -hmm. both, they'll do better at school because they're going to take that same kind of honor and be respectful in the classroom. This is true. See this that? True. So I think you know our time might be wrapping up a little bit. Yeah. But I'm telling you, it's so important, fathers. 
you've got a tremendous role. You have great power. You've got great influence. You have tremendous influence in the lives of your children. Your children need you. Um, the mother of your children need your support. You're a great asset. You've got great potential. You need to help by helping, even if you're in an estranged relationship, even if the person's your ex. The thing is this, you are a co-participant in bringing that child in the world. When you help the uh, mother of your child, you're also helping your children. So I want to encourage you today. Uh, men, let's step up to the step up to the plate, as uh, uh, Claremont says. Let's do our part. Let's hug your children. Today. Give them a call. Bless them. Get involved. Support them. Give to them. Help them fulfill their dream. And I'm telling you, you're going to be truly fulfilled in your life because you've helped your children to be better than you. Before we go, I want to read this uh, statement in Merlin. Said she says the government, along with colonialism, is responsible for the de degree. Degradation mm -hmm. of and segregation of the black family. Mm -hmm. um, she says, "Our she, she was addressing yes, it this yes, morning. Yes, yes. What was happening, which is absolutely true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, pretty much, this is one of the things that we, we go through a, as a black family, and mm -hmm. we need to remember that. <laughs> believe it or not, um, we need to speak more about it to bring back the black fathers exactly. back to the homes. Exactly. Yeah. And we've um, we've talked a bit about that in the past, but we're going to keep moving on that. So we're going to pick up on this next week. Okay. So we're going to continue part two. The power of fathers. Until next time, God's richest and best be yours. And remember, uh, there's a book that I wanted, the, your book that you've written, that I want you to Foundation for Leaders 101. Yeah. Foundation for Leaders 101. It's on our website, foundationforlife.ca. And if you're not going to church, you need to attend Foundation for Life. Family church. This yeah. Sunday. <laughs> this Sunday. This Sunday. But uh, just before you go, there's one more thing that yes. I think there's something happening um, on the 17th. Oh, the 17th. Thank you so much. There's our men's meeting, a men of honor meeting on the 17th, and we'll communicate that next week. So uh, okay. that's going to be Saturday at 10 o'clock on the 17th. Thank you very much. I'll have to put a note out on yeah, that. Yeah, because, you know, i got to remind you. No, that's well, that's you. why I'm here. I appreciate that. <laughs> that's here. That's I, appreciate that. That. Yeah. I was looking at the time. I thought yeah. the time was gone. Yeah, so. no, we, we, still, we still got, yeah, we've just about finished right now. We're good to go. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you next time. Where's the music? of Jesus Christ.